let us pray. Lord God, hear the cries of the sorrowing world. In your mercy, set us free from the chains that bind us and defend us from everything that is evil. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus and his disciples arrived at the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite, opposite Galilee. As he stepped out on land, a man of the city who had demons met him. After a long, for a long time he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. But Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and was bound with chains and shackles. But he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, what is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. He begged him not to order them back into the abyss. Now there on the hillside was a large herd of swine who were feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine. And the swine rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. When the swineherds saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened. And when they came to Jesus, they found the man for whom the demons had gone sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I hope you are enjoying the summer season. Uh, perhaps you are planning a vacation, or perhaps uh, you are watching this video while you're on vacation. How nice. Of course, this is Father's Day, and I would, of course, hope that you have something planned for the dads among you. Uh, something nice, something special. Uh, a cake doesn't hurt. Most fathers do like cakes. Likewise, grandfathers as well. And uh, perhaps, um, perhaps we can even say a prayer or two for those fathers or grandfathers who have gone to be with the Lord. Um, I'm sure in your family, as in mine, we give thanks for their time with us, even as we continue to miss them. And so uh, God bless you all. God bless especially the fathers and those who have been like fathers. Sometimes Christians get in circumstances and there's no father nearby, and sometimes you have to kind of be a, a father on the spot to someone in need. And uh, it makes an enormous difference in people's lives. Do not be afraid to do so. Today's gospel, probably not remembered by many people. It's an odd gospel. It's a gospel of exorcism and of healing. And so we hear how a man who was naked and did not live in a house but in the tombs saw Jesus he was possessed not only by one demon, but by a host of demons, for his name is Legion. And a legion is a hundred soldiers. That's a man who's obviously possessed by many demons. And so Jesus, Jesus meets this poor man and frees him from his demons. And the demons ask for a favor, which I think is amazing. You will not find this, I think, in any other scripture. Jesus grants a favor to the demons. Don't cast us out, because if we get cast out, we get cast into nothingness. Cast us into these swine that are here. And so um, they ask Jesus for this and beg him, and he gives permission. And the demons come out of the man and enter the swine, and almost immediately the herd rushes down a steep bank into the lake and are drowned. I'm not sure what I understand about that, perhaps... Being in a swine or a pig is not the greatest of things. I don't know. I don't know. 
I know it was quite a burden for the swineherds who saw what had happened. These swineherds had a, an idea that perhaps they would sell these animals for profit, and all of a sudden their business is gone, literally gone. And who do they blame? Well, do they blame Jesus? They don't. But everyone around, when they hear the story of how a man uh, was uh, cleansed of a demon, actually many demons, and how the, the swine accepted those demons and, and drowned themselves, that's a crazy story. And so the people are afraid. They're seized with great fear, according to our gospel. And so what do we have when all of the dust settles? We have a man who is no longer possessed by demons and is clothed, which is a good thing, which is a very good thing. The people are afraid of Jesus, but perhaps they recognize that he has been sent by God. And the one who was healed, the one who was healed, wants to stay with Jesus, but Jesus sends him away, telling him, return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. And as kind of a side note, our gospel ends as we hear that the man went away proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus God had done for him. In Jesus' day, the idea of being possessed by demons was pretty much common. The idea of being mentally ill wasn't. And so it's hard for us to understand how in our world, who does, where we don't see demons in, in, in so many places, how, how this happened or what it meant. But we know there was a healing done, and what was broken was mended, and what was, and what was out of control or what was captive was freed. And that's good news for us. There are many people who are out of control and captive by a great many things, by addictions, by drugs, by their own greed, by their own lust for power or pleasure or money, among other things. This story which we heard today, this cleansing and healing, this story is for us. So many years later, it's for us. God continues not only to do miracles, but to do great miracles, even in our day. There's hope for those people who are addicted, who are captive, who are controlled by others. Their shackles can be broken, their chains can be loosened. Indeed, they can live a new life through Jesus Christ. We can't solve all the problems of the world, but certainly we can do more to help those who are captive. A lot of times they're not necessarily bad people. They're people who can't control themselves and do things which are terrible. My hope for us is as we hear the scripture, we recognize that perhaps there aren't quite as many demons in our world as there was in Jesus' world. But there are many people who are captive and broken. And perhaps in our time, perhaps we have some different resources which can bring them healing and wholeness. And perhaps a relationship with Jesus Christ will be a, a very good start in that healing and wholeness. May God bless us as we hear these words. May God strengthen us in faith. May God allow us to reach out to whomever is in need, wherever they may be. Amen. Let us pray. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, creation, and all in need. Holy God, you hear the cries of those who seek you. Give us evangelists who welcome strangers with outstretched arms and the promise of a home in heaven. God of grace, hear our prayer. You hear the cries of the earth. Restore your damaged creation. Help us to develop new technologies which protect rather than hurt the earth. God of grace, hear our prayer. You hear the cries of those who are ignored. Guide us through the end of oppression in all its forms. Bring true freedom to all of your beloved children. God of grace, hear our prayer. You hear the cries of those who suffer. Come to the aid of all who are homeless, naked, hungry, and sick. We especially pray for the people of Ukraine and everyone on our prayer list. God of grace, hear our prayer. On this Father's Day, bless all good fathers, and look with favor upon those who have acted as a good father in time of need. God of grace, hear our prayer. 
We give thanks for the faithful departed whose lives have witnessed to your continual love and mercy. At the last, unite us with them as we make our home in you. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of every time and place, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.